Okay guys, so in this video we're going to go through a lateral glide technique of the hip um, to help with flexion of the hip. If you found that that is improving or helpful in a supine position, um, you can potentially progress that into a more standing position which could be a little bit more functional. So, Glenn, how do we do uh, this technique? So yeah, we're going to do a mobilisation with movement, so we're going to use the belt. A uh, really useful technique if people are getting hip pain when they're going up high steps or high stairs. As you said, really nice to start in the supine and do the lateral glide that we showed on an earlier video. Uh, and if that's useful, then this is a nice functional progression to that. Mm -hmm. So we've got um, Patrick here on the chair. He's got his foot up into a position of flexion of the hip. Going to get you to position that towel for me, Patrick, if that's OK. Nice and high up into your groin. Make sure everything's out of the way. And um, I'm going to take the belt, place it around the back of my hips. And I'm just going to click that into place. Make sure the belt's nice and high up towards the joint line. And now I'm going to take my hands in between outside the belt here and then on the inside of the belt here. And then I'm going to create a lateral glide by just shifting my weight posteriorly. So I'm putting the glide on there. So Once, just sitting back in. Exactly. That. Sitting back into the belt. Obviously, the height of the patient will dictate exactly where the belt goes. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, where I can just have it around this area and I'm just sitting back into the belt to create that lateral glide. And then I'm going to ask Patrick to just bend forwards at his hips and then back up. What you're looking for ideally here is for this movement to be pain free. Yeah, so if you get him to uh, flex at his hips prior to adding the glide and it's sore, when you put this lateral glide on with the belt, the pain should diminish or disappear. And your right hand, you're stabilising so that you're not getting an abduction type motion. Exactly, yeah. So if I sit back without, you can see how it can pull his hip out into abduction, I'm trying to keep it in a nice neutral position. I'm not pushing, I'm just uh, bracing and supporting. And here as well, I'm stabilising his hip to give him a little bit more support. If balance was an issue, he could have his hand on the chair or even um, on his own knee. The main point is that we get a nice flexion at the hip so as he bends forwards again. And again, you're creating that hip flexion by a lumbar spine flexion um, because it's much easier to stabilise that, that foot in that position. Exactly. So you're not actually moving the hip up into flexion, but we are relative flexion, into relative flexion by using the spine. Exactly, yeah. Um, in the first instance, I'll probably just do 10 repetitions with that and then uh, re-evaluate hip flexion, see if there's any improvement in the, in the pain. Perfect. So yeah, that's a... Um, hip flexion mobilisation with movement in a functional standing position.